and that's when I really um, had to stand on the Lord during that time because I didn't have any vision or future for my life. I didn't have a major, I was in academic probation, I was sick, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I'm just constantly every day reading my Bible and crying because I don't know what I'm doing with my life. My name is Tanner Williams. I grew up in Northern Virginia. I'm one of six, so I have five other siblings. So I have a really big family. And there are some advantages and negatives to that. Now that we're all adults, we're all really close, so it's great. But growing up, because I had such a large family, it was sometimes tough to stand out among all my siblings. And so I did that by doing really well in school and by having a lot of friends and doing well in sports. And growing up, I would go to church every Sunday with my dad. And I hated it because on Sundays, my dad would be this loving father. And then on Mondays, I'd you know come home from school and go to bed and then I'd be woken up by him beating me because of something I did wrong. And so I'd see him act one way on Sunday and another way during the week. And so I hated it because I saw my dad act like a two-faced two -faced person, um, seeing him be this super loving father on Sundays, and then during the week, I'd be getting spanked or beaten, and so I despised the church and I hated it because every time I went to church, it seemed so fake to me because my dad would be this caring, loving father and crying during service because of the way he treated me, but then throughout the week, I, you know, something would upset him and he would end up like beating me because of it. And as a result, whenever I was home, I was constantly um, I would have tension in my life. I was always on edge whenever I was at home because I could never feel restful because I had to be aware of how my father was and where his, um, I'd be aware of my, my dad's uh, emotions. Yeah, I had to be aware of my dad's emotions. And as a result, I could never come home and just relax. It was always constantly on guard on, on where he was and whether he was going to explode on me for something I did. And so that was all of elementary and middle school. It was a lot of that, a lot of arguments with my dad and fighting with my dad. And because of it, I was really aggressive as a kid. And I was, yeah, never at rest or I never felt peace in my life and was constantly angry all the time. And I filled that by trying to do well in school and having a lot of friends and doing, you know, filling my time with sports. And, and even though I had, you know, tried to fill you know, that um, even though I tried to fill that heartache in my life through other things, it ultimately it didn't work. And um, yeah, I was just constantly acting out. And then in going into 10th grade, my summer, my parents forced me to volunteer at my church's summer camp, which again, I hated the church because of everything that I'd gone through with my dad. Um, and growing up, I didn't know any Christians, there weren't any Christians in my elementary, middle, or high school that I knew of. And so the only Christians that I knew were in my family. And because my father treated me so poorly, I had one view of Christianity, and it was very distorted. Um, and it wasn't until that summer going into my 10th grade that I met other Christians my age that really loved me and cared for me. And through that entire summer, they were just constantly showing God's love to me. And over time, my heart and heart started, you know, um, breaking towards, you know, the Lord and started opening up and started really coming to realize what, like, who Jesus is and what he did for me instead of what my, had, the way my dad treated me, but the way that, you know, Jesus' sin has covered everything. And even though um, I had gone through a lot of hardship growing up, I knew um, throughout that summer was just realizing that God's love overcomes all of that. And it was through that summer that I ended up, you know, accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. And over time, my dad and I, our relationship started to get better. So I'd say end of, I'd say end of high school and going into college, my dad and I started having a great relationship as I changed as an individual and became less aggressive and less upset all the time. And he also started following God a lot more. We now to this day are like super close and I call him once a week. But looking back, there was, you know, a really hard time in our relationship. And now that it's really great, it's beautiful to see the full circle of everything that happened. But it was, it did take a while for me to forgive him and work through that relationship. But ultimately I'm like super blessed and grateful that I do have a loving father in my life now and we have a, a great relationship. What do you think brought about that change in your relationship with 
Yeah, so the I think the change honestly happened when I'd say end of middle school, my dad actually, I think, started taking his relationship with God more seriously and started working on himself and started going to anger management. And he, you know, stopped abusing me by the end of, of middle school. But when I was like in ninth grade, I still had all of this baggage and um, all this resentment toward my dad. So even though he started treating me really kindly in ninth grade, I didn't, um, I didn't really want to believe it or didn't really accept him or forgive him for it because of everything that I had gone through. And it sort of started with him being more kind to me and then ultimately see, hanging around people my age that were actual Christians that I think made me come around to becoming a Christian. And then ultimately by the end of high school and into college, my dad and I became a lot closer. So growing up in, when I was in elementary and middle school, I didn't think about Jesus a lot. I was basically turned off to all of Christianity. And most, when I was going through that hardship, most of it was just me trying to survive is what I felt like looking back of trying to figure out how do I evade getting hit and beat. And it was constantly about um, trying to figure out ways to make sure I wouldn't get in trouble. Or there would even be times where I'd even lean into it and be really aggressive and mean um, because of it. But ultimately, I, I think my, I was like completely turned off by it. I never really thought about it or really even considered being a, a Christian or believing in Jesus. So the exact moment that I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was um, with my youth group and we were at uh, a beach house. We rented, my youth group rented a beach house for a week and it was a time to get away from our day-to-day -day lives and right before school started, right before uh, my 10th grade year started, and that entire week is just focused on worship and reading our Bibles and doing, um, um, what are they called? Uh, yeah, so that entire week was focused on worship and reading our Bibles and doing devotionals. And I think it was middle way through the week that the Lord had been working on my heart throughout the entire summer and culminating in the last week of the summer going into my 10th grade year and surrounded by other Christians my age and reading more about the Bible and doing these devo devotions and worshiping. And I think the Lord just really transformed my heart and really started forgiving my father for what he, what he had done to me in the past and just accepted um, Jesus for the way that he died for my sins and died on the cross for me. I think it's ultimately when I accepted him was during that week um, at the beach during the summer going to my 10th grade year. Yeah, and going or throughout high school, became a Christian, definitely early in my faith, figuring out what I believe, then trying to, I guess, navigate that whole situation and eventually went to college. And um, one thing I remember going into college is, is I remember um, in middle school, before I was a Christian, I was super popular. And that, again, like I talked about earlier, provided a lot of value for me. And in high school, I became this Christian and stopped hanging around a lot of those people because I knew they weren't a good influence on me. But then going into college, there was that desire again of like, okay, I'm gonna be really popular again. Um, so yeah, I wanted to meet a lot of people and the way I did that was by playing volleyball and my entire time was dedicated to meeting as many people as possible and I would do that by playing a game of volleyball, meet 10 people, play another game, meet another 10 people and then after day one, I knew 80 people and I would grab dinner with all these people and then the second day I'd meet another 80 people and constantly was doing this and all of a sudden I knew 500 people on campus. Um, but then once school started, my entire time uh, was focused on keeping up with these relationships, trying to keep in contact with these 500 people, which was basically all I did. I stopped going to class, I stopped doing homework. All that mattered to me was being friends with all these people. And then ultimately um, through that first year of college was just realizing that it again didn't like satisfy um, it like ultimately didn't provide this um, happiness. It was like an empty happiness because it's impossible to really know all these people. And it was all service level friendships. And it was through being involved in Crew, which is a Christian community at college that I actually started realizing that true friendship is getting to know each other and lifting each other up and loving each other. But having 500 acquaintances didn't really add um, like any value to my life and just left me feeling more empty because I had all these shallow friendships. And so that first year of college was all about, again, not defining myself by how many people I knew, but in my relationship with Christ. And yeah, going into my sophomore year, I was like, okay, 
the number of friends I have, you know, isn't important. It's how close I am with these friends and is, am I, you know, growing closer to God um, with, you know, through my friendships instead of just randomly knowing all these people. And then sophomore year was trying to um, wrestle with not doing well in school because my entire freshman year I didn't do well in class. And like I talked about earlier in high school, I had like a 4.1 GPA. Then I go into college and I end my freshman year with a 2.4 GPA, so almost half. And then I end sophomore year in academic probation because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was struggling in all these classes because uh, I didn't really have any vision for my life. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I was just taking all of these random hard engineering courses mm -hmm. and doing really poorly. And so that whole sophomore year was me wrestling with how do I not find my identity in my grades and wrestle with my identity in, in following Christ instead. So a lot of it was not letting my GPA affect how I was feeling because when I would do poorly in tests, I'd feel terrible about, my, about myself and get really depressed and really sad and like wouldn't want to get out of bed. And then when I do well, I would feel great. And I was constantly on this roller coaster of stress and of uh, these intense emotions because of my how I was doing in school. Um, and then basically going into my junior year, I finally had gotten over, um, you know, wrestling with friendships and figuring out um, it didn't matter how, I was, how well I was doing in school. What mattered was like my relationship with Christ. And then going into junior year, I finally felt great. But then I started getting sick and I couldn't sleep at night and constantly had the flu all year round. So then I went to the doctors and they told me, Tanner, you need to take off all of your junior year. You need to get your sleep back in order, your health back in order. So now all of a sudden, I'm in, still in academic probation. Now I'm sick, I'm taking all of my junior year off. And now I'm looking around my life and I don't see um, like any fruit of all this hard work that I had gotten, that I had done um, in high school to get into college. And now I'm done, you know, in my third year of college, not taking any classes. And that's when I really um, had to stand on the Lord during that time because I didn't have any vision or future for my life. I didn't have a major. I was in academic probation. I was sick. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I'm just constantly every day reading my Bible and crying because I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Um, and it was just constantly just over that entire year relying on God and finding him for, you know, satisfaction and going into the summer after my junior year. I decided to work for the summer camp that I ended up following, accepting like Christ through. And um, so I decided to work for that summer camp, decided to work for that summer camp. And at the end of my junior year, going into my senior year that summer, and I basically dedicated that summer to God. And like, it felt so great just every day, um, hanging out with these middle schoolers and telling them about God and hanging out with them. And then finally going into my fourth year of college, I, my health was in order. I started doing really well in school. I got in Dean's List my, my fourth year, the first semester, I got a 3.8 GPA, I believe. So I was on Dean's List, got out, of, got out of academic probation, switched into a major into computer engineering. And now it felt like everything that I had gone through about you know relying, trying to find friends for, for happiness and looking at my grades as a way to to define who I was. Finally, all of that's taken away and all I could rely on was God through that entire junior year. And then finally in the senior year, it felt like I was finally getting out of this valley of my life as I figured out what major I wanted to uh, be in and started getting closer to graduating. And even though I'd finally like gotten over all this hardship, um, that didn't mean I, I still had to go to school for two more years. So I finally graduated um, after six and a half years, which was still hard, but I would gotten past all of these tough situations in my life that by the time school was over, I was just happy to be done and like um, super grateful to have such a strong relationship with God because I'd gone through so much hardship that even though it was, it stunk and like was a lot of suffering through that, um, I just felt so strong by the end. And to this day, I was able to get a job right out of college and uh, moved to Houston and lived there for a few years. And now I live in New York City, which has always been a dream of mine. And just seeing the fruits of that, those this was five years ago, um, being able to see the fruits of that is really incredible in my life. But at the same time, it was like super difficult and super hard to go through. So through that whole season of life, the main thing I learned about God was 
about not worrying about my future because in college that's what it's always about about everything mo most of your decisions are decided by what it will look like for your future how your future jobs will look future internships and that whole season was giving up my future to god and r relying on him for that and not focusing on every possible situation but realizing that um, that God knows his plan for my life and just believing in that even though the the evidence of that in my life was nothing I didn't have a major academic probation was sick but what the truth that I relied on and you know hold fast to was that God has a plan for my future and knows what's best for me in my life and that was I think the biggest thing that I relied on during that really hard time I think God's transformed me throughout my entire life. It, as a kid, it was this, I was really angry, upset all the time, um, never had any peace, and now I'm, I guess, now much more chill and relaxed. And I, the, when things go awry in my life, I, I know that I can rely on God. And so when hardships do occur, I know how to get through them. Um, so the biggest way the Lord has definitely transformed me is not relying on the outside world for validation, but relying on Him. and who he is and my relationship with God as a way to uh, find value and sustenance in life. Um, in college, when during that junior year when I was sick, I had issues falling asleep and constantly had the flu. And in order for me to overcome that, what I did is I would, um, right before bed, I would read my Bible until I was tired. And then I'd go lay in bed. And then when I couldn't fall asleep, I'd get out of my bed go back to my living room and read my Bible until I was tired again. So every night it was, I was reading my Bible three hours a night until I finally fell asleep. And then a few months later, it would be two hours a night until I could fall asleep. And then eventually it was one hour. So basically it was every night, instead of watching TV or being on my phone, I was reading my Bible and using that as a way to um, like get closer to the Lord practically, I guess, just constantly reading my Bible every day until I got tired. And then over time, my sleep schedule got better. My health got better, and then I was able to finally like, recover from all my sicknesses.